Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. Oh, getting a lot of artifact in there. I don't know if it's the shirt or what's going on, but wow, that's not good. Hello. Uh, I'm probably going to adjust this while we let a few more folks uh, pop in to chat to join us before the, the stream starts going. First of all, Harold, thank you very much for hosting. Always appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to throw the Bear Cave emote uh, and the... Uh, I'm going to throw some emotes there in the chat for folks. The Both the Bear Cave emote and the Bear Lego emote. You can use that if you're currently a subscriber. But yeah, i got to fix uh, this artifacting here. I think artifacting is the right word for it. I don't actually know. But um, adjust my chroma here before we get into building our cool Lego set. This is uh, from the Lego movie. It's the uh, Garmadon. Lego Garmadon. We're going to build this giant shark friend. Our big shark robot friend. I can't wait to build it. Um, but yes, hello and welcome. Uh, turn the similarity down a little bit. Uh, that should help some. And close. Yeah, that helped a bunch there. Okay, good. Um, as I said, we are going to wait a little bit. Now, it could be that folks getting back to their real lives, not here to watch a stream, could be a light numbers tonight, totally okay with that. Uh, we had some of our biggest uh, viewership numbers on Monday, which was thrilling, very excited about that. Um, really nice to see folks join in on Monday for the countdown uh, to the new year, played some games, streamed for three hours, which is a lot for me. I'm more of a two hour kind of guy as I will be tonight. But uh, playing games is a lot easier than building. Uh, and there's a lot more to talk about than when you're just building. So very much appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I hope a few more folks pop in uh, to watch because, you know, it's nice when there are folks. I know there's a few folks here. I uh, got some VIPs. I added some new VIPs. So you'll, you'll probably see that icon when you tweet, folks that are now VIPs in there. Uh, just because I, I got more of them. We unlocked more because we had a bunch of people chatting on Monday, and that, that helped a bunch. But yeah, I don't want to hang out too long before we get to building. Um, this whole week feels like very strange. I set an alarm to remind myself that I was streaming uh, tonight because I, I knew I was streaming, but like, just reminding myself that it's Thursday. You know what I mean? Um, on uh, on Mon uh, Sunday, I went to work. And then I didn't work Monday or Tuesday. And then I worked yesterday on Wednesday. And I tweeted out, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Just to remind myself that, like, okay, I got to go to work. Um, so it'll be cool. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to throw the Bear Cave emote there. And the uh, Lego emote there in chat. If you're a subscriber, throw that back. Let me know the chat's working. Because right now, I got nobody in chat. And, and I, yeah, hey, 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 camera. Hey, webcam. Hey, you at home. That's fine. If you don't want to feel like chatting, that's cool. You don't have to chat. Someone uh, just renewed their subscription. And if you want to click that thing that lets people know you renewed it, you could do that now, and that would be cool. Um, but yeah, I am not getting, uh, a, uh, anybody else in chat. And so I would love it if people want to say hi, let me know chat's working. That would be cool. And as I said, you don't have to, we'll get to building in just a moment. Uh, I'll, here's, here's our, our villain, uh, sector seven. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to refresh. Sector 7, I see you put question marks there, but that's the first time I, I saw anything, but I don't see it in my dashboard, uh, which is annoying. Oh, Harold, there you go. All right, I had to refresh. That happens. Harold with the uh, Bear Cave emotes. I now have chat. Chat is important to me. I hope it's important to you as well. Harold says woo. Appreciate that very much. Thank you, Harold. But yeah, uh, hello. Now I can see all of you. There, there's There's friends here. That's very good. Thank you all for hanging out. Um, uh, yes, very nice to have folks in chat. And the person that uh, that uh, 
use their uh, renew their subscription. Thank you very much for that. Always appreciate it. Uh, Asmo's here. Hello, Asmo. Asmo's newly minted VIP uh, as a chat VIP. Um, what does it take to be a VIP? It mostly just like you come a bunch and then you you say stuff in chat and that's fun. It's nothing outstanding. It's not hard to become a VIP. When I get more slots available, more people will become VIPs. Um, it's just mostly a thank you. Uh, so, all right. So I don't like that. So I, let's see if I can change this again. Sorry, y'all. I had all this set up and now it's not what I want. So let's turn the similarity down a little bit. That'll help. Nope. That a little more. Okay. And then let's just check the brightness down. All right. That's better. That's what we're going to do for tonight. Uh, stuff and things. Uh, indeed, Harold. Stuff. Um, hey, there's a hot dog. Here's a nervous hot dog person. I'll put it right there and then I'll put it right uh, here. I got a hot dog man. Hot dog man. Man in a hot dog costume. There's also hot dogs. Um, cause there's a hot dog slash noodle cart. Uh, now, now to be fair, I don't know why in the Ninja Go movie, there is a hot dog slash noodle cart, but there is, and it's not Patrick Klepek in a hot dog costume and it's not Dan Record throwing hot dogs or Max Temkin throwing hot dogs. It's none of those things. It's just something real weird. All this hot dog talk is making me hungry for burgers. I like where you're coming from, uh, Ultron. Uh, I also could eat a burger. Um, I think I said that, I may have said this podcast. I don't know if I've ever, on a podcast, uh, live stream. Guy in the hot dog suit has to be named Patrick, right? Asmo, yeah, I mean, to me, this is Patrick. Is this actually Patrick? I don't think it is. To me, that's Patrick. Um, I will say, um, when I was very young, I was an incredibly picky eater. I'm better now, but I was very picky as an eater and I loved hot dogs. So my mom, to get me to eat some goddamn thing would serve me a lot of hot dogs. And I would, I didn't, I like buns. I also liked no buns. So I would cut them up a lot and that worked out for a very long time. And then I hit a point where I just was done with hot dogs. And it took me years, years and years and years before I was okay with hot dogs again. Uh, and I never craved them. I'll eat them, but I never craved them. On occasion, I uh, will go to a place called Crift Dogs or another fancy hot dog place and get like a fancy-ish hot dog. My favorite fancy hot dog um, of all time is the Good Morning Dog. Good morning, dog rules. It is a hot dog um, wrapped in bacon, wrapped in American cheese. Probably a cheddar cheese slice will work okay. but uh, And then wrapped in a fried egg. And it's it's a good morning. They're not wrong. All right. So um, I've got a bag one here. I think, believe there's seven bags. Board Ming. Can't stop, won't stop with the subscription. That's 12 months in a row. Board Mink with the year. We're going to be doing bo the kit that Board was gracious enough to gift me. Uh, I can't wait. Um, that's coming up after this kit. Work on the Tall Geese 3 from Endless Waltz. Gundam Wing Endless Waltz, I should say. Tall Geese 3, one of my favorite kits of all time. A beautiful looking model that came, thankfully, from Board. Uh, which is incredible. So thank you for that. Uh, Road says, hey, Pat, I can't make it tonight. So just want to stop in wish, uh, while I could and wish you a good stream. Road, thank you very much. Road, another person I made VIP today. Got to spread the VIP love. Thank you for that. Um, have a good evening, and I appreciate your support. Uh, when I fly to see my parents, I fly to Detroit. There's a Charlie uh, Coney Island there, and I have to get a hot dog coming and going. I get it. Uh, it's been a while since I've had a Coney Island dog, like go to Nathan's, get a, get a dog. Um, uh, cause I haven't been to Coney Island in a while, but you know, 
I do like a good hot dog. It's just I never crave them. I'm never like, it's hot dog time. I'm going to go and buy a bunch of hot dogs. Uh, but I'm better than I was where there was a period where I could not st stand the sight or smell of a hot dog because I had eaten so many of them that I was done with them. Um, what is flashing? that something's, Something in the corner of my eye just keeps popping in and being weird. I don't know what that is. Um, this piece. Great. So we're dealing with some grays here. we got some colors. I believe we're building the hot dog cart right now, which is pretty fun. We're building our hot dog cart, and then we will work on uh, starting our mech shark. Uh, Harold says, I have a hot dog toaster. I've seen those. You even have a room for the buns. You put the buns in, you put the hot dogs in. Uh, yeah, that would be a, um, what's the word for that? Uh, a unitool. I believe, I'm, I'm sure there are people that have hacked it to do something else, but mostly you're doing that if you are in a place where a lot of people want hot dogs. And I get that. I am not currently in that place. I do not want for hot dogs. Uh, but I get why people would. Uh, I guess I'll put this the way they want me to instead of the way I want to. Um, okay. Oh, got some hot dog chatter here. Asmo says, I've also been considering ordering a bunch of frozen half smokes from Ben's Chill Bowl in DC. Chili Bowl, I should say. Sorry. Uh, because, damn, I miss those. I get old-fashioned dogs from the butcher and grill them up. Still good. Get that board. Understand. Uh, Santini says, uh... My dad flew from Connecticut to Florida once just to eat a hot dog. He had frequent flyer miles that were going to expire. Context is important. Thank you very much for that context, uh, Santini. And then Sector 7 rounded up our conversation on hot dogs for now. Just says, I'm not a fan of hot dogs. Thank you, Sector 7. That is a good little bit of a button on that on that chatter. Uh, now I know what chat thinks of hot dogs. Uh, and I really appreciate all your takes. Uh... Who flew to, oh, my friend, a friend of mine just flew from San Francisco to Vegas because doing so would give her a certain number of travel miles and then she would be due for an upgrade uh, in 2019 or to keep certain benefits, which is similar to, well, use them if you got them. Uh, everyone is welcome. Yes, a hundred percent bored. Um, especially when it comes to eating habits, like, you know, everybody's got their thing. There are certain things I don't like. I, y'all, I've tried. I just can't do sushi. I want to do sushi. Uh, because like I have a lot of friends who really love it. So I would love to, uh, go and get sushi with them. I think that would be real fun. But I don't like it. So I don't want to. Um, and, you know, at some point, maybe that'll change. I do check in with foods that uh, I like and don't like on occasion. Check them out. I eat more peppers than I did uh, in my youth. Way more onions than I did in my youth. Uh, yeah, like bell peppers, particularly. Never a fan of those like them a lot now. Uh, and I think that's very important to do. I still don't like uh, raw tomatoes. I don't mind cooked tomatoes as much as I used to mind them. I certainly like marinara sauce and ketchup, but I don't like raw tomatoes. People were like, if it's got a sliced tomato on it, I'm not interested. Um, but I check in every couple of years because, you know, your taste buds change, uh, especially as you get older. Uh, your... Um, uh, your, your, your taste buds certainly like stop working as well. And you suddenly want more salt and more spice as you get older. So it's good to check in on that stuff. You I mean, you might be pleasantly surprised. Uh, love me some, uh, some sushi with the wasabi paste. It says Ultron. Um, Santini agrees with you about tomatoes. And, uh, uh, Eno says, I've been addicted to sushi for all my life. I eat it with lunch at least once for lunch at least once a week. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just never stuck with me. 
I've just never had an interest in it. I, um... Like, I've tried it. I just... No, I'm just like, no, no, no. But I will keep trying as the years progress. Because that's how you find out about things. Uh, it used to be that I did not like any um, crustaceans. And now I like crab. And I like lobster. Um, I like oysters. Well, I can't believe I like oysters, but I like oysters. Um, uh, and I like uh, mussels. Can't believe I like mussels. I do. Um, but yeah, young me would be just incredulous that I like a bunch of different seafood stuff than I did when I was a kid. Um, Mr. Bob says, Hey Pat. Hello, Mr. Bob. Uh, Harold flexed when you said muscles. Hell yeah. Uh, so, oh, I'm dropping some frame rates there. I apologize. I'm dropping some frames. Apologize for that. Hopefully, um, the stream will be okay. Uh, did not have any problems on Monday and have not had any in ear issues today. I'm sorry that I dropped some frames there uh, for the live chat or live stream. Those watching on YouTube uh, almost never run into any issues uh, because my local is usually very good. Uh, like two to three oysters every few months. So that's plenty. I get that, Esmo. Um, Harold says sushi is so good. Yeah, it, you know, as I said, y'all, it's just not my thing. All right, so we're going to put some signs on here. We got the hot noodle dog. As I said, this is a, uh, this cart is a multi-purpose hot dog and noodle cart, although you only see the hot dogs. And these are decals, so if I screw up the first time, it's not hard to redo it, which is some of the best parts of that. Uh, there is a, a noodle sign that I guess we make at some point. Um, uh, we've got a hot sign we got to make too. Um, this is this kit came out last year and looked incredible, and I was I've been eyeing it for most of 2018. Eventually, uh, I got two Amazon gift cards. It this kit was on sale, and then I just used money from from streaming to go ahead and just make it happen because I, as I said I've wanted to build this kit for a while uh, it's an Amazon exclusive so at one point it was well over a hundred dollars and I was not going to spend that it's still a lot if I didn't have the gift cards I wouldn't have done it uh, Ultron says I used to like chicken salad but last time I had it I got bad food poisoning and so dehydrated I had to go to the hospital oh shit Ultron uh can't stomach the thought of chicken salad ever since. Yeah, same with me with Kraft Easy Mac. It's been 15 years too. Wow, I, I've never been hospitalized for, for illness. Um, I did get very, I got food poisoning um, uh, as a kid. Um, not as a kid, as a teen. I got food poisoning eating duck. It was not prepared well. And it took me a long time before I was interested or willing to have duck again. Um, and then I had duck, I don't know, 10 years ago. And I was like, hell yeah. Didn't get sick this time. But it took a long time before I was like ever interested in that. And it was just like, I got duck at a, I think a Korean place. And it just wasn't prepared well. I can't remember exactly. It may have changed, you know, over the years where it was. But in my mind... It was a Korean place. That did me wrong. Got a hot sign. Uh, shrimp cocktail can no longer eat it. Sector, uh, shrimp cocktail feels like a thing that you would, that you could try, like eat too much of once, and that would be it forever. Um, I particularly, of all the crustaceans that I mentioned liking, shrimp is not one of them. Uh, it does nothing for me. Uh, I don't hate shrimp cocktail, but I don't particularly like shrimp cocktail. Uh, if shrimp isn't a thing. I'm not mad about it, but I'm not amped for it either. Um, what do I know? 
Hey, folks, uh, I was waiting to talk about it, but we're talking about food here because hot dogs, and we can start talking about food. So I'll say it. Um, if, I feel, if I seem a little sluggish today, know that's because I ate too much Arby's. Uh, I don't, um, I don't know, I don't, I haven't been eating, um, I'll have to cut there. I haven't been eating fast food for a while because of my diet. I've been very good about it, but there's one Arby's in New York and I was near it because I went to the big post, the Penn Station post office today because I had to mail some stuff out. Um, so I went to the post office and. And it's not too far to that Arby's. So I went to that Arby's. Uh, I found the meat. Yeah. So here's the thing. I didn't want to get a lot. I was just going to get a medium-sized meal, get some curly fries, get one, uh, you know, get one sandwich. I was just going to get the beef and cheddar. Not, you know, just the meal, not the not the jumbo, not the double meat, just the regular one. Some fries, which aren't great for my diet, but I was going to do it, get some curly fries, and then a soda. I get a diet soda, call it no thing. Asmo, you say that, but what happened was, and, I, and I'll, I'll admit this, I did not know what happened at the time. Got my package uh, to go, uh, went to go to where I was going to eat because I was uh, going to meet some people, meet some people. Um, uh, and so I went to go meet up with them, open my bag Two big beef and cheddars, not one big beef and cheddar, two big beef and cheddars. And so I ate two big beef and cheddars and that was too much Arby's for me. It was very good, but it was a lot and I will pay for it. And I'm already feeling very sluggish because, as I said, I've pretty much cut out fast food. Um, I like—I still like it a lot. Don't get me wrong, but I've been—I've tr- been good about cutting it out. All right, so we have a hot dog and we have another um, hot dog bun, and we can actually put those. There's a there's a little compartment in here. They made a little compartment, which is kind of cool, and you can put the hot dog and the spare bun, hot dog bun, and the spare hot dog in there, and you can open up two different ways. Which is fucking really cool. I like that a lot. Uh, in case something happens to your hot dog. I think that's really neat. Meat coma. Yeah. Sector 7, I'm in a bit of a meat coma from Arby's. It was very good. And I was very happy at the time. But I did not need for that to be my dinner. Alright. Our hot dog cart is done. Overhead shot. Here's what it looks like there. It's got a hot thing. It's got this the chime. Uh, it, I love that. I love that we made a giant novelty hot dog with a with noodles on it. The hot noodle dog. It kind of is on wheels. It's a, it's a cool thing. And we can. Uh, oh yeah, because the table is not. And then we can have. Well, put like that. And then we can have our friends. Attach his hands to the cart, can we? I don't know, maybe we can't. There we go. Heck yeah, we're doing it. That's happening. See right there, hot dog cart. And there's the guy who's going to try to steal those hot dogs, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, y'all, but let's get started on our shark. Fuck yeah, we're doing it. Um, so I wanted to talk about... Uh, some anime this week, uh, but um, it's that it we're we're in the week where uh, shows ended, a bunch of shows have ended, and just about everything that was seasonal wrapped up. Now there's new stuff coming out as soon as I think tomorrow or Saturday there are new shows, so there'll be new things to watch. But uh, I thought that I could just watch my ongoings. Well, all my ongoings, like every ongoing was delayed around Christmas, including that time I got reincarnated as a slime. So on Monday, I tuned in on New Year's Eve day, tuned in to watch that time I got reincarnated as a slime because it's a double, it's 24 episodes. No episode. Very surprised. Did not know that they were taking a week off. 
Um, so, but then I was also um, pleasantly surprised because that was an unpleasant surprise because I liked that show and wanted to watch the episode. Um, because there was a sec, there was a thirteenth episode of, and I'm going to look up the title because I forget the title. Um, today's menu for Emia family. Um, I've talked about this before. Uh, that uh, today's menu for Emia family is a, um, it's like a short, like thirteen minute episodes. It came out once a month. It is it within the Fate series, but it is a side story. Uh, that focuses on cooking, uh, and it focuses mostly on uh, Shiro and, and cooking. Um, Shiro Emiya, um, and it's very fun. It's very cute. Uh, there, the twelfth episode came out in December. I thought that was the last one because it was a Christmas episode, but this one was the January episode because it was monthly, and it. It definitely was the end because it definitely like wrapped it up and like put a nice button on it. Um, and the thing is, I, I don't know a lot about Fate. I've never watched any of the series. I know some things, including like like a big spoiler for the first story. Um, and I know that like the character, uh, there's a character, uh, Sakura. I know that like life sh is shitty and bad for her. So like it's nice that there was this series where everyone kind of got along and made really good food and it was like very pleasant. Uh, and they, um, portrayed, <clears throat> excuse me, Saber with loving care. And I've tweeted that, uh, I get why so many people, uh, consider her like a best girl. Like I started to understand why people are really into Saber because she's like really fun and cute in the show. Uh, but yeah, I would overall recommend it. I think it's a, um, that's a fun show. And I was, as I said, pleasantly surprised that there was a 13th episode. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, and then, so people have been telling me all season long, all of this past season, the fall season, um, that I should try. Uh, a show that I did not give a, a proper uh, attention to, which is Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. That is a lot. Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. So it is kind of like someone described to me, and I forget who, and I apologize, as a monster of the week, but it's about uh, the main character helping... Uh, mostly girls and people uh, in like deal with their like weird their weirdness and their like oddness uh, the stuff they're, they're, they're like life stuff they're going through uh, I've only watched two episodes and it seems alright like I don't know if it's gonna be a show that I put a lot uh, I, if I finish I don't know if it, I'm like gonna watch all of it but it because uh, I think it's like 13 episodes, but it was interesting. Uh, I'll admit that, that I was, I was intrigued by it. So I'm, uh, I'm going to try to keep watching it because it's, like I said, we're in this, this time now where most of the stuff I want to watch isn't coming out till next week. Uh, so, um, that's what went wrong. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if that's going to be a thing, like I said, that I keep an eye on. But um, it seemed kind of cool. So I might. Um, yeah, and then uh, I watched a lot more of Gridman. Uh, i got to actually write that into my listing of things that I we talked about here on the stream. Uh, Gridman is getting better. I really do like it a lot. Um, it's what's S S S S grid man. I'm enjoying it. Um, I know some people really liked it and some people were like, Meh. uh, board says, uh, this is about, um, I, I assume this is about uh, bunny girl. 
Uh, I like the positive vibes from the series. The characters are supportive of each other and worked out problems. Yeah, it seems very supportive in a way that I'm, like, interested in. So uh, I'm going to keep watching, I think. But, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff coming out. Uh, Ultron says he's thinking, uh, they're thinking of rewatching Gurren Lagann. Ooh, okay. All right, Ultron. I like that show a lot. Um, yeah, I am definitely a fan of Gurren Lagann. Enjoy it. Um, but yeah, more, more stuff that I want to watch is coming out, so I'm not worried about that right now. Um, let's see, what? I, I listed a bunch of stuff that I am interested in, and maybe y'all will be interested in it too. Um, so, uh, I don't know if it's this season, but I know that it's sometime this year. Uh, Endro. Endro. With like a weird thing and then an exclamation point. Um, Endro is uh, a slice of life about a group of girls who are adventurers. Um, it's a slice of a comedy about adventurers and that sounds very good and I'm excited about that. So I'm going to check that out. Uh, Gridman was a good show with a satisfying ending. It's part of the Ultraman canon and that really came out in the last episode. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely stuff I want to check. It's definitely a show that I want to check out. I just haven't been able to. Um, uh more of. I'm going to keep watching. So yeah, so Endro sounds good um, as we build this thing. Let me need two of these pieces here. Need this. And I need one of these. Uh, let's see. What else did I want to... Oh, I, I missed a piece. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so uh, Dororo... D-O-R-O-R-O -O -O, uh, was a, a manga in the 60s. I believe it was a, an animated uh, series, a short-lived animated series in the 60s as well um, that like kind of ended before the manga or ended abruptly, it sounds like. Uh, it was also a PS2 video game. Um, that's going to be on Amazon Prime. So that's the one show I know that is on Amazon Prime that's interesting to me is, is that. Um, and that is the story of a, uh, a samurai, uh, or like a leader, a lord, samurai lord, um, sells off 48 pieces of his son, like body parts of his son to demons in order to increase his strength. And it's a story of this guy who a medicine man like gave replacement parts to is tracking down these body parts so that he can eventually get them all back, and then go on revenge against his dad. And there's also a young thief, and uh, I, I played the game. It has a different name, and I can't remember what it is, but I played the game, at least some of it, and I'm interested in it. Um, as I said, that's going to be on Amazon. So that seemed cool. Um, Shield Hero? I don't know. I like a good adventure show. Feels like it's a harem adventure show. But I do like the idea of playing with the genre of reincarnation like they are, which is the idea that it's it's a dude gets summoned to this world or reincarnated in this world, like that kind of thing. But there are four heroes, and he's considered the weakest one, and then he's betrayed, and so it's kind of like him showing that he's not the weakest one or something. I don't know. It seemed kind of interesting. Uh, I look forward to that. Uh, at least giving that a shot. Uh, Blood Will Tell, says Ultron. That is the name of that uh, Doro game. Blood Will Tell. That's what it's called in English. Yes. That game was cool. Um, Girly Air Force. I am generally not a person that enjoys the genre, the subgenre of girls who are vehicles or girls who act like vehicles or artificial girls who are the best pilots kind of a thing, which is what this show sounds like it is. Uh, and the normal human boy that makes everything okay. Uh, I, so I like the theme song a lot. Um, 
by Run Girls Run. And I, I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot, but it's because it looks like it might be cool. But I think that's going to be one of those shows that, like, I might just bounce right off of, like I did Radiant, you know, where I'm like, I'm sure there's somebody who's psyched about the show, but it's not for me. So I don't know about that. I feel like that isn't going to be end up being a thing that I want to watch. But I'll give it a shot. Um, one thing I out, oh, another show, I'm going to give a chance, even though I don't like the subgenre, is Magical Girl Spec Ops uh, Asuka. Magical Girl Spec Ops Asuka. I'm giving that a shot. I have little to no interest in. It's a it's about magical girls, but like dark and like. Oh, did you ever think? Why are they magical? Isn't that kind of fucked up? Isn't that a lot of responsibility for a young girl to like have to do magic and like be that thing? And what if the person who gave them magic isn't all that it seems? And like. I'm generally not into that shit, but I like the idea of there was this war, there were monsters, and a bunch of girls became magical, fought them off, and now we fast forward in time, and like at least one of them is just like, no, I'm a fucking high school girl. I don't do that shit anymore. I'm not into that anymore. Don't ask me to do this. Because there's like more monsters, and also like, they basically like, as you can say, Mask Girl uh, Task Force. They're like, hey, terrorists are attacking. We want the Magical Girls to take care of it. So I kind of like the idea. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much of the first episode is just this main character being a high school girl before she has to become a Magical Girl again. I'm not sure. So, like, I'm kind of interested in that. That sounds bizarre to Mr. Bob. Yeah, I, I'm much more interested in what happens when a, a young magical girl is now a high schooler. Uh, and as Eldron says, trying to get out, but they keep pulling you back in. Yeah, I'm much more interested in that than I am the, like, dark-ass, ver the other dark-ass version of that, which is like, it's actually fucked up that they're a magical girl. Um, so... Uh, I'm going to try to give that a shot because it seems like it might be interesting. Uh, and then the one that I, I have a feeling like it's a slice of life, but if it gets creepy, I'm out because it, I think it might be creepy. Okay. So this is, this is it for bag one. Um, we're going to build more off this. We can put this X. These are all extra pieces we can put in our baggy, save one of the bags and then we'll start nulling bag two. Um, so a show, like I said, I might bounce right off on, depending on how creepy it gets, is Wataten, an angel flew down to me. Uh, so we've got a college girl, Otaku, who uh, her sister, younger sister, goes to middle school and comes in with like a cute, fun friend and then makes more cute, fun friends. And how the older sister is like very psyched about that because she's an Otaku and likes that uh if it gets creepy i'll bounce but if it's just a fun show uh full of friendship that could be fun um but like i said uh that might be very bad and then there's uh, obviously you know okay so we're gonna get back to we're gonna start no link back to obviously there's other stuff coming out uh there's a new fate series there's uh, I forget, is it Kimono? I forget the name of it, but there's the, uh, the Animal Friends show. There's a season two of the Animal Friends show. The, and my problem with that show, I know I would like that show, but I can't get over the animation. I really, really dislike the animation. So I have been unable to get invested in that show. I would love, 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 love to like that show, but I cannot because uh, I just can't handle uh, the art style. Uh, it is not what I want. Uh, it's very cute looking. I'm sure it's fun. But it's like uh, one of those shows, or the shows is like, there's like an animal uh, reserve where all the animals have humanoid traits. 
and they're like fun and there's friendship and then a real human young person shows up and is like I need help and they're like yeah let's help you let's help you figure out at, you know where your family is and so that sounds fun and I'm sure it's going to be real cute and great but it is not something I want to watch because I don't like how it looks uh, I don't know if there's anything else coming out if there's anything you're excited about for the anime season, let me know. Jump in the chat and let me know. Uh, I love hearing from y'all about stuff you're into. And sometimes people recommend things. And I'm like, yes, like I'm watching uh, Rascal uh, because people were like, it wasn't on your list and you should check it out. And I know you said you didn't enjoy the first episode, but give it a shot because I didn't enjoy the first episode. So we're knolling, we're doing our thing, and then of course, you know, I'll probably keep, I'll probably let a bunch of episodes of um, Black Clover uh, fill up, because they just had their big, big episodes, and now, like, stuff's happening, but it'll kind of be, I think there'll be some comedy for a little while. Hello, The Hollow, welcome! Um, but yeah, I, I think there'll be some comedy and stuff in... Uh, in in Black Clover for a bit. Although I do know... And hi, Johnny! Hello and welcome! Hi, friends! Uh, I do know that Black Clover has... One of the minor characters gets a shining moment in an upcoming arc. Uh, an upcoming fight. And I'm excited about that because I really like uh, the background character in the Black Bulls. The Marilyn Manson looking dude who whispers all the time. Uh, I think that's... I think he's apparently very cool. So I'm excited to see what he has to do. Uh, apparently he's got some cool abilities. But it'll be it's always fun when they have like the kind of joke characters get to do some good stuff in those kind of shonen shows. Uh, oh, we're doing the big shark today. Yes, Johnny, we've already built our uh, hot dog cart. We're nolling bag two. We started with bag one and we've gotten some uh, we're, you know, some with the mouth here from our shark. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're nolling back too, but we also got, yeah, got our hot dog cart done and our hot dog friend all set up. I'll pop that guy off so they put that over there. But yeah, we're just nolling our bag, getting ready for, for more building. Let me try to open this away from y'all. Um, yeah, like I, I'm obviously slime has 24 episodes where we were in episode four. 15's coming up, I believe, or 14, I think maybe 15, um, so, obviously, still excited about that, it's one of my favorite shows of the year, so, happy to have more of, uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, uh, and, uh, yeah, I think those are my ongoings, in the summer, we'll get more My Hero, um, there's more laid back camp coming this year, supposedly. So that'll be good. Um, uh, mob, uh, of course, mob psycho two starts this week. So happy for more mob psycho. That'll be good. Um, let's see if there's any other, I think, I think I listed all the ones that I'm excited about. Yeah. Uh, well, Totten. Uh, Magic Girl Spec Ops, uh, Girly Air Force, Doro, Shield Hero, and Doro. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to try these shows. I don't know if I'm going to like them, but I'm going to try them. One Punch is in April. That's right. New More One Punch. Happy for that. That is indeed in April. Um, so that'll be, that'll be good. Excited for that. All right. So yeah, so we're, I'm not going to, I'm just doing by color. I'm not doing by size. I'm not going to kind of organize it by in any way I'm just kind of separating by color and then just pushing things together here in groups and then I will sort through the groups when I need a particular color um, I have to be careful because uh, sometimes this blue this blue looks sometimes in the in print it looks a little similar to the gray you can definitely see the difference here in on stream, but in the photos, sometimes that or the dark gray. Now, it looks like this size is not duplicated in any other color um, in this bag, which is very helpful. 
But sometimes it'll they'll get you that way. And I gotta separate this stuff here. But yeah, just separating by color makes it easier to sort. Um, Mob Psycho 2 this fall. Yeah, Mob Psycho... Oh, hello, Daddy. Uh, um, Mob Psycho is like this week, literally. Uh, I'm uh, recommitting to in 2019 finishing Cowboy Bebop. Asmo, good luck. It's I, I think it fucking holds up. I think it's rad as hell. Um, I think that the overarching plotline stories are great. The overarching, I should say. Plotline stories are great. I think the monster of the week or fight of the week or, you know, villain of the week, bounty of the week stuff is also really good. Some of it's better than others. Uh, I think the action is fantastic uh, and holds up. Um, it is also, pound for pound, uh, one of the best dubs to ever exist. It is one of few shows where I can say, 100%, I recommend the dub. I think the subtitle is are obviously great, but in the, you know, uh, voice actress, especially Faye Valentine's Japanese voice actress is incredible uh, and so subtle and great, but that dub is pretty good. Uh, and you know, also, the movie isn't bad. The movie's not great. It does have the line, I like a woman that can kick my ass, as said by Spike Spiegel, which is a good line. Um, and it is like action-packed and sad, which is a good, good, which are good qualities for that show. But Not Gonna Have a Door is all right. It's just not great. It could be, it could have been incredible. It's just not incredible. Um... I think I like the first episode in the movie the most, says Johnny. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I have only watched the movie twice, so I may be bi I may have a bias because I've watched the show so much. The thing that made Bebop a bit slow for me was the way their little uh, through line between most of the So it is a thing where some stories are interconnected and you just don't realize it. Like, uh, they're bad at being obvious about the the episodes that have a lot to do with one another. Uh, uh, anything that was a science experiment is most likely somehow interconnected, but they don't spell that out. And in, in some instances, they it's conjecture by the fans. So I agree with you. I think there's a lot, there's maybe too many episodes that are just fun adventures and not enough of like, why is this fucked up? Like, why was that so fucked? Who did this shit? Um, but I also like that there's still some mystery involved. I think that's kind of cool. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I should revisit the movie because I did enjoy the movie. It's just been a while since I've seen it. All right, so we're going to build our mini figs here. We did our knolling, uh, and we'll be building off this in a moment, but we can put together our mini fig here. We've got the angry person here. To, oops, we got to put the scuba backpack, or it's either, you know, I, I love a good scuba tank. Uh, okay, uh, I, I'm weird and like the standalone episodes and not really the Julia Vicious stuff, says Danny. I can understand that. I've been watching the dub since people said it was pretty good. One of the last episodes I watched was the first of the big story plot and made me think, oh, I get it now. Yeah, I think that there's like, there are definitely times where it's like, this is what we've been doing. And you're like, oh, shit. Uh, and there's, like, connections, yeah, and there's a little momentum to grab me and drag me along. I still enjoyed it, but I did fall a few times. I, I can understand that. For me, it was, like, it was appointment viewing. I was watching the blue or the Blu-rays, the DVD releases of it and just devouring it. Um, yeah, I think Jet, uh, U.S. voice actor, is fantastic, I think. Um... Uh, Spike's the U.S. voice actor is great. Uh, I prefer the Japanese Ed, uh, personally. Um, but I can understand why other people wouldn't. 
Uh, all right, so we have this braces, braces woman getting ready to eat a hot dog. She's got a hot dog. She's ready to go. And then we've got this dude wearing a cool shark's helmet who's clearly a villain being all villainy. Uh, when's the can Cowboy Andy spinoff? Uh, I feel like the movie is mostly like a bigger episode, but I liked it because it has more room to breathe and there's always something I appreciate. Yes, I mean, it does feel like a big episode. Um, it also feels like my big thing is when you when you do a movie in a series like so that movie takes place before the end of the show. No spoilers for people that are going through it, but the movie takes place before the end of the show. So when you when they do stuff like that, the fear is that they're not going to that why, you know, it can't be so big that they don't talk about it. It's not weird that it doesn't come up in conversation because they rarely talk about things that they've done. But, like, there's so certain movies, like uh, the UU movies, the Yuck Show movies, the One Piece movies. At least one of the One Piece movies is canon, and they discuss what happened in, it in, the, in, the, in the shows. But a couple of the movies aren't canon, and it's like, that seems like a big fucking deal, what happened there. No one's ever going to talk about it? All right, I guess... Uh, that always seems weird. And so it, it's it's a little weird they don't. Um, like, that's why I didn't like the latest season of Game of Thrones. Everything goes by so fast and it doesn't let any of the events so good. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, shows that don't, like, live in their moments that are that push a lot uh, can, be, can be tough to, you know. It, it's nice when a show it allows itself to breathe. Um you know, that's why I would say, like, you can't judge a... Sh you can't... It's hard. You can't. You certainly can't. But I try not to, is what I should say, judge an anime by its first episode. Because they are doing a lot of heavy lifting in the first episode. Um, I was reminded uh, recently of a show that I don't think is great. But it's in a genre I like, so I watched it. Um, uh, Death March to a Parallel World. I don't think is that good, but it was interesting. And one of the things that's interesting about it is, so it's a normal guy who works at a game studio and they make like MMOs and RPGs, falls asleep after working a lot of hours on a thing and wakes up inside a version of a game that he's been debugging. And he's like, what? And then he never wakes up and he doesn't know why he's there. And... People have died and being reborn in that world, but he didn't die. So he's like, what the fuck? What, what is this? Why, what's happening? And it's not a great show. But I, one thing I thought was really fun is most of the episode was like his real life and then him showing up in the other world. And there were a bunch of comments from people going, I wish he hadn't gone to another world. I like this show about a game developer who's like dealing with crunch and is like a senior in the company and like the problem solver. And I was like, Oh, I guess that's the risk you run when you set up a lot of that thing. Like they need to set up that he understands how RPGs work and how MMOs work. So that when he wakes up in this world, he's not having a bunch of episodes where he's like trying to figure out what's up. He's trying to like, understand what, what it is he thinks it's a dream at first he thinks he's dreaming about a game he worked on like they had to do some work to get that set up but then people were like i don't know i kind of liked when he was like working on video games that seemed cool uh which is not what they would want obviously the creators of the anime certainly wouldn't want you to be like wanting another show or a show like slime slime doesn't take too much time in the real world before you end up in the other world. Uh, you have your character. You get to see what kind of dude he is. You get to see how he died. And then it's go time. And he's in a parallel world. And you get enough of who the person is. So you can understand why he reacts the way he does. The situations he's in. But I kind of like that. Uh, and one show I 
definitely don't recommend because it is fucking way too horny is it starts with an a it's rogue hero it's like something other of a rogue hero and it's not good but the thing that i like is it takes place after the first season of a show that has not aired there is no first season of the show the show starts with this dude has been a hero this dude defeated the demon lord this dude who was from Earth, from Earth, went to this fantasy world, did all this stuff, uh, did all that. Then he's like going back to his re the real world, and then it like picks up from there, and that to me is fucking cool. I don't think the show is good. Um, it's far too horny and far and gross in ways that sucks. Uh. Uh, when someone who watches anime says that something is way too horny, you know it's really bad. I mean, it's just like, it's lots of fucking boobs, and there, the other interesting thing is he's got, it is a harem show, and that he's got a bunch of ladies who like him and want to hang out with him, but one of them just like, is gay, and she definitely never identifies herself as bisexual. She definitely identifies herself as gay and likes another girl that's in this crew. So it's kind of interesting to have a girl in the harem that is not interested in the main guy outside of like friendship and support. That's interesting. They don't do anything with that. But it is interesting. Um, I wish they did more with that part of the show because it could be cool. Uh, but yeah, that show overall is not great at all, but it has ideas that I really like, you know, every once in a while I, I think about those like elements that I, I think are cool about a show, even if I don't think the show is good. Um, but I don't know, making some progress here, getting some stuff done. Uh, yeah, I mean, like like I said, I, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, it's A something or other. I just can't remember what it is. Of a rogue hero. I just can't recommend that show because I don't think it's good. It's also, like, predictable. There's, like, the guy who decides that he's friends with the main character. And you're, like, he's, like, lazy. But it's very clear that he is powerful. And you're, like, you're doing this, you're going to betray everybody. Or if you don't betray everybody, you're holding a big secret. And, like, it's just like kind of run-of-the-mill. There's a lot of run-of-the-mill about it. Alright, we'll attach some stuff here. But as I said, the thing I like the most about that show is the idea that it um, is uh, it's starting, like, as if the first season already happened. All right, so we're just going to do some stuff here. Just building up our shark at this point. I wonder if this thing's going to fit in the box. I don't know if it will. Um... So I'm going to send two Lego kits out at the end of this month. You know, my subscriber thing. Um, uh, I sent out Lashbrook's kit today. I'm going to have to message Lashbrook and let them know. Um, but uh, I haven't, you know, two, at the end of the month I have two kits. And one of them is an ATST that I had to, like, remove into sections to fit in its box. So assembly for that is going to be required. Because I was like, there's no way I can make this just work, unfortunately. Which, you know, I'm not thrilled about, but it's better to transport it in the box than transport it and the box, is my opinion. I'd be willing to take a second opinion on that, but that's how I think the best way is. It's also the best way to store kits, as, as far as I'm concerned. If I don't have a kit on display, getting it back in its box is important. Uh, and usually it's the kit that won't fit in there, or the ones I keep. But I don't want to keep too many kits over the years. I definitely want to be sending some of these out uh, and, and share the wealth. All right, so now we're putting some teeth in here. 
see that there. Guess these, yeah, these are teeth. Consider teeth here. Got some bottom teeth and some top teeth on this friend. Uh, All right. And then long piece here. Then there, there. All right. Uh, all right. So we're going to keep building on this, but I'm going to take my break right now. Uh, and then we'll talk about some other stuff. But let me take a moment here to say, first of all, thank you very much. We're going to go to the overhead here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Uh, if you're not currently following uh, the channel, uh, give the channel a follow, set your notifications so you know when I go live. I stream on Thursdays and Saturdays from uh, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Um, so I hope you'll come and check me out again. Uh, we're going to be building until 11 p.m. tonight working on this kit. Uh, I'm excited to continue to work on it. Um, this kit was bought with money uh, from Twitch uh, because I am uh, an affiliate here. So I have subscriptions. If you would like, please consider doing a subscription, either with uh, cash money or with uh, your Twitch Prime coin. If you have Twitch Prime because you have Amazon Prime, you link them together, you get a coin you can use. Uh, you have to renew that. It does not auto-renew. So consider renewing. Um, that would be very helpful. As I said, money I make from Twitch goes into me buying kits. So I use two gift cards for this kit um, because it was expensive. And then I also use some of the money that comes from Twitch. Um I really appreciate that. If Twitch is not your thing and you don't feel like supporting me that way, there are other ways you can support me. We will get back to building after I just talk about these quick things. Uh, it's also in the show description here on the YouTube archive. I have a Patreon. You could join my Patreon. It's at $130 right now. I would love to get to $150. Once I hit $150, that is a sustainable amount of money per month that will allow me to open up uh, another stream. And I would stream three times a week that will be build streams. Not the bonus stuff, not the game stuff, because I'll be doing more of that. I'll be doing a Twitch Sings sometime next week uh, stream, uh, which are fun and I enjoy doing, but are not the same as me building. But I can't build three times a week unless I hit $150 there on Patreon. Consider that. There's some benefits. I'm not going to get into the benefits there. They're cool. Uh, I got to do a new video, a new like, hey, this is what's going on video. You could also, if you want to support me as a one-time thing, buy something off my Amazon wish list. Uh, I just added some new stuff to it. Um, at the top of it, you'll see that I have the uh, Optimus Prime Transformer model kit. I would love to build that. That's very new. Um, I also just found them on Amazon because they pop up and they pop down on Amazon. They're in their $40 price range, which is expensive, and I appreciate that and understand that. A couple Zords. There are a couple Zords. Zoids, not Zords. Zoids. Zoids. There are two Zoids. There's a Liger uh, and a uh, uh, Petrus Bomber. Uh, and they're construction kits. And I'd love to build them. Uh, Zoids are a thing that I'd love to build. And then there's model kits and Lego sets. Uh, the uh, um, the Oni Titan is a cool looking kit there. I could build I could build the mech out of Lego like I'm doing now. There's a bunch of stuff in there. They all look cool. That's another way to support me. And then I also have my coffee. Uh, if you just want to leave a tip, give me a couple bucks. That goes right into my PayPal. Um, that's that's cool. You could do that. Um, and uh, I have a Bill Bear community, which is my Discord. Please join the Discord. Uh, I post stuff. People post links, so you can find out when other people who are um, who are in the chat are streaming. Because a few of you stream as well. Harold certainly does consistently, all all the time, and other people do on occasion. And you can check that out um, and support people that support me. And then uh, I do have a show in January this month, Friday, January 18th at 10 p.m. at Union Hall. It is a show called Shit Arcade. Uh, it is awesome. It, Mike Drucker runs that show. 
Uh, it is the next time I know for sure I'm going to be doing a comedy show in New York because people ask about that on occasion. Uh, when I'll be doing shows, when's the next show I'm doing. That's the next show I'm doing. I know for sure I'm doing that. Uh, it's a great show. Uh, I do really enjoy it. We're going to play some bad video games. It's a live show in Brooklyn. Consider it. No pressure. Consider that. Uh, I'm going to drink some water, then we're going to get back to building. So let's go to the overhead. I have to drink a bunch of water because my throat is dry. It's a lot of dry air here. So move the mic away, and I'll drink a little bit. Ah, that is helpful. Um, all right, so we're going to build again. I do uh, want to go back as I start to build, and we can talk about whatever folks. If folks have something in the chat they'd like to talk about, throw that into chat now. That'd be a great time to throw that into the chat. Um, there's something you're interested in and in talking about. Uh, I'm always interested in doing that. Um, let me know. Um, uh, cause you know, that stuff's always cool. Um, but, uh, Johnny, I actually just refer, Johnny, would you mind, uh, copying and pasting what you just wrote in there? Cause you, uh, posted something in chat just as I was refreshing because I'm having some issues, um, with the dashboard. So if you wouldn't mind putting that back in, I will be able to read it. Uh, cause I missed it. Um, you don't have to, uh, there you go. Still trying to get back into streaming myself. It's hard to get in the habit after being gone for so long. Also, I'm used to doing streams as a group, not solo. I get that. Um, yeah, I think when I first started out, the idea was that I was going to do it. Um, I mean, the very first one has a guest. The very first Build Bear workshop. I am at my uh, works uh, training facility, the UCB training center. And I have my friend John comes in. Uh, cause he was working at there at the time. And so he pops in to say hi. And I thought I was going to do that. I thought I was going to stream once or twice a week and always do it remotely with my setup so that I could have guests. I felt like that was going to be an important thing. And what I quickly realized was, well, if I did it here, I could do it at night if I did it at home. And if I did it at home, I didn't have, I, it would be a lot easier for me to stream if I did it, uh, here. So that quickly went out the window. Um, and in fact, having a guest on the stream has been, what, twice, right? John, the very first time. And then Aaron Trites when I was in, uh, yeah, Aaron, because uh, Charlie was going to come hang out and Charlie d missed it. He didn't make it in time, Charlie too. Um, the hope is that uh, if I travel this year more or as much as I was last year, because nothing's set in stone, but I'd like to go, that uh, my hope is that when I'm traveling for comic conventions or what have you, I will be able to stream from the road um, and you know bring a Lego kit and stream there. And then when I'm on the road, I'm going to try to have guests come. Because if I'm on, you know if I'm in an Airbnb or if I'm in uh, a hotel room, especially from a hotel room and I can get good internet. Uh, the idea of having a guest come and hang out seems like totally doable and totally fun. So that's kind of a thing I'm looking at doing because uh, I, I think it would be neat. Um, but, uh, you know, and then I was also able to guest uh, on Waypoint and on Giant Bomb and do some building with people, which was rad. And a thing I've been wanting to do for a long time. Building kits. I actually haven't seen Austin since. And Austin wasn't done with that kit, which I want him to keep. Uh, the uh, uh, SD Gundam that he was building. But I... Uh, so I'm glad he, he was working on it. But I also want that thing. I want the clippers back. Because they were my spare clippers. I mean, I have a good pair of stemper clips, and uh, they're holding up, but I wouldn't mind getting mine back again. Yeah. Oop. But yeah, hopefully uh, this year I'll be able to collaborate with people, at least at the very least if I'm at Emerald City or 
San Diego Comic-Con, I'm going to try to have guests for my streams. Probably not for New York or anything where I'm here in New York having someone come. Uh, we, uh, Johnny says, we have a pretty decent Sony camera with a good battery, and I need to figure out if I can connect that up to OBS stream video source somehow. Would let us do a lot more non-video game streams. Yeah, um, uh, there are lists out there. I think there's OBS lists of what's compatible. I know my HD camera is not compatible. I would have to use a third-party source that costs money to trick OBS into accepting my camera as a source because originally I thought I was going to use that and the webcam I already had. Uh, as long as you have a capture device compatible with OBS, you could use that. Yeah, so it's that thing of like, I thought that was going to work, but turns out my camera does not like that, which is fine. I, I managed to make do. I ended up buying a second webcam and just, you know, chop call, you know, deciding that was part of my build cost. But yeah, I think there's a, there's a list out there of like what is acceptable and isn't uh, compatible with the video output. Yeah, there are options. I'm actually glad that I'm not using my camera for that. And then I'm just using webcams because it uh, it means that my camera, I just use as a camera. I end up getting something. I had this weird thing where uh, a webcam is definitely on my upgrade list. Mine works, but it's not good. I understand. I have a, uh, on my uh, Amazon wish list, I've had uh, a better webcam than these two because I would like this camera that's right here. I would like to love to replace this with a camera that has a ring light on it. Because I think that would be nice to have a light coming down from that source to the table. But this camera still works great. And the one that's facing me works great too. They're both good. Um, this one's a little older than this one. But they still work. Um, they're still good webcams. Um, but yeah, like I said, I would like to upgrade that. And then, you know, I've thought about doing a room mic instead of this microphone and the headset, but I do like the ability to be uh, mobile with it that I, like, it, this picks up very well uh, for, for my needs. But having having a lapel mic or something would be probably be helpful in the future. And I also have a, I have other ways. I have a, a, a mixing board and a XLR mic that I can plug in and like that'll work. My original microphone, uh, I still have, but that was not a good mic. My first, the sound in the first couple episodes, eventually I got better. I tried, a, I, I thought having a lapel mic would be the way to go. It turns out I really just want headset microphone. Um, uh, a webcam definitely would, oh, I want to eventually be able to stream video games from the couch. I'm missing a few pieces of equipment and basically know how I would do it. Uh, and Danny says, cool, couch streams are a lot of fun to watch. Danny Vicky, totally right. Totally right. You know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. Yeah, people would, uh, you know, wondered if I was going to start covering other games like that, that kind of stuff on uh, Let Pat Play. Uh, I'm mostly sticking to PC because it is very easy for me to um, capture while I'm playing. Uh, that's a good rig. I don't have capture gear for consoles. I don't have a second computer, and I'm not capturing that second computer. I'm just using the computer that I have uh, and just running OBS because I have two monitors. So I am just capturing one monitor uh, as a source, as a display. And that works out really well for me. So I'm happy. I'm very happy with that. How that works. All right. So we're working on our shark here. Some kind of room here in the mouth. Might be the control room. Eventually we'll get to that. I don't know. Uh, as I said, never seen this movie. Never seen anything Ninja Go related. But dang, if, it, if these kits aren't great. Highly recommend it. I think the dragons are all awesome, uh, especially the green uh, Chinese dragon is incredible build. One of my favorites of last year. Do, 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 do. All right, we gotta put all these. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 
all of them on the back here. Make sure that I'm in, you can see what I'm doing. I will say, um, the Mega Constructs, the Gyarados that we made, I really enjoyed that because I, I like the Mega Constructs booklet. Um, I talked about that while we were building it, but for those that weren't there, there's something really good about it. Um, there's something just like, you don't miss a step with it. Really, for this, you really have to look at like every piece of what they're doing because it's easy to sometimes just like miss a thing. And that kit is hard to miss and uh, steps in the Mega Constructs. That's the nice thing I can say about them. Um, uh, Smash Mel says, what I'm missing is USB hubs, cables, a camera solution for the living room, and a capture box that works with modern consoles. Yep, that's a lot. That those are those are some steps that you are missing, um, but yeah, couch couch stuff is fun. You also, um, you know, if you are looking to just uh, live stream stuff is helpful. If you're going to just start by start by making some YouTube videos, you certainly don't need a webcam for YouTube um, video stuff because the culture there does not expect that. Uh, you know, my Let's Pat, Let Pat Play series is just footage and my voice because that's kind of the common thing. There are people who stream that don't use, that don't have their face up uh, for whatever reason. I think it's more common, obviously, to have uh, a webcam on Twitch. But yeah, if you want to start by just making some YouTube videos, get to that. You could, you know, do that without dealing with the webcam part and then add that in when it's time to stream. I think it would be weird. I I would feel weird about streaming without the webcam. I mean, obviously, games. I don't mean build. Because even when I'm building, like, luckily my laptop has a built-in webcam. Now, it's not a good webcam, the, the, the laptop one. Uh, it's mostly good because the mic is pretty decent. But it means I only have to travel with one webcam, and, and that's how, that helps. Um, let's see, uh, Johnny says, speaking of Pokemon kits, were the stickers a pain on your Soul Galero kit? Galeo kit. Yes. That kit is all stickers. Uh, I, uh, I, any of the Pokemon model kits that I have built, and it's only been two, but any ones that I've seen, because I've, you know, looked online, I always look online for kits, uh, for, for research purposes. Uh, every piece of that uh, of those things are very reliant on uh, stickers for all of like all around the feet and paws all around the 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 main uh, all the good detail are sticker based because it's like a high grade for a model kit for for uh, a Gundam uh, and that is incredibly frustrating but true uh, stickers on curved surfaces are the worst. Yeah. Like you have to like wrap it's like, it, you have to like wrap it around and like do a half and a half. It, the Solgaleo turned out cool and it's a good, it was a fun kit to build. Like I liked it. A Solgaleo. But, um, in general, I would not, uh, recommend it if you don't like, if you hate stickers. Uh, hello mech. Welcome. Uh, we're gonna build this. I don't know who this this bad person is. Uh, clearly, this is a bad person, but this weird double armed person we're gonna build, and we're gonna build a ninja. Uh, weird double arms. Um, but yeah, all right, we're on bag three. It's time to knoll bag three, and I don't know if we'll finish bag three, but we'll at the very least start knolling. Um, throw the bag on the floor, and as always, standard operating procedure. We we've already gotten to bag three here, but. Just separating by color, and then separating, uh, and then just start building. Um, that's the thing that is keeping me from buying more Pokemon kits. I love the Lula I got, but the stickers are way too much. Disappointed to hear the other Pokemon kits are as bad about that. Yes, they are bad about that. Uh, I would even recommend the Mega Constructs. Uh, oh, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate that, uh, Mech. Uh, Mechanical Mar. Thank you for the follow. Um, I wonder if you could print some custom water slide decals uh, or buy them on eBay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, 
I would uh, honestly recommend the Mega Constructs Pokemon kits, uh, you know, the, like the Lego, the not Lego kits, over the model kits. I love building a model kit. Don't get me wrong, and it's it feels weird to be recommending a uh, a Mega Constructs, but the Mega Constructs Pokemon kits are fun. Uh, they're uh, excited to see one of these things built while I work. Oh, that's great. Th yeah, thank you, uh, Mech. Um, it's always nice to have people following. Uh, we'll be building this today. We'll be back on Saturday. We're going until 11 p.m. Eastern tonight. So we'll know this bag, and then we'll start building it uh, and get some work done. Um, got lots of swords. Uh, yeah, I just, I really... Um, yeah, I would recommend. There were so, there were a couple stickers on that Gyarados that we made, but very few. Even the eyes were were custom, and so that was nice. Uh, I, I you know I appreciate that. Even the Dragon Ball kits usually only have a couple stickers, and that's usually like the for the geese or something. All right. Got a couple different grays here, and that blue color. That throws me off some, but there's a lot of this blue color, so hopefully I'll be able to tell it apart. As I said, you know, if you're really looking at it, you can tell a difference, but in the booklet sometimes the difference is, isn't isn't helpful. Uh the uh, Lula kit I had like four places where you just put stickers on a pyramid shaped surface and it just got so many creases on it. Yeah. I may just get more of the Dragon Ball kits. Yeah, I mean, I love the Dragon Ball kits. I've built a lot of them. Uh, Piccolo is still hanging there out on the wish list there. Uh, someday I might just end up buying it just myself. Um, but that's also what the Dragon Ball kits are the ones I look at when I go to conventions to see if I can get a good deal on them, see if they're cheaper than Amazon or maybe, like, cheap enough, if they're, like, a little bit more. Because those are the kits that uh, they don't take up a lot of room uh, the Vig the Vigito kit that we I bought, you know, that was a thing that like wasn't out in the U.S. yet. Um, they had it out special for uh, for San Diego, so like that was a no brainer that I was going to buy that. And then uh, if I'm I don't know if I'm going to Emerald City, like I said, I think I'm going to Emerald City Comic Con, but I don't know for sure. If I do, I also will like look to see what's what's for sale and who's got what and pick up something if I need it. You know, I, I'm always looking out for cool kits. Uh, if there are cool kits out there. Um, but yeah, I really do like Dragon Ball kits. I think they're very fun. And even like, I still have those two tiny kits that I have to build. The little ones that uh, came out of vending machines in Japan that they boxed for, for international. I have two more of those. We built one. Uh, we built the little Goku and I've got more of them to build. And so I would, uh, I got those at New York Comic Con. They were, they were on, they were in a good deal. So those are also ones that I look at, at like conventions. I also, as I said, I have to get, um, I need to purchase a couple small Lego sets. I'll probably just go and buy them with the next, the next time I get payout from PayPal. Uh, from from Twitch, I should say. Um, I have to. I'm looking at getting a uh, uh, a couple small Lego kits, like the Ray uh, Speeder that I used uh, for travel, um, or those weird McFarlane. I only bought them because uh, Toys R Us was going out of business. Steven Universe kits. So uh, somebody asked me about those kits the other day. The ones I built with Aaron. They're like, hey. How'd those end up looking out? I'm like, well, they, I put them together very easily, and then I threw them away and did not fly back with them because I did not have a lot of room in my suitcase coming back. I ended up with more comics, and I got that Voltron kit, uh, and I was like, uh, I don't have room for shit. So those didn't come back to me because they also did not look great. Uh, heresy. Look, those kits weren't good. Those were bad kits. They were fun because I built them with Aaron. I wouldn't want those kits. I wouldn't want to send those to people. They took up a lot of room 
And I was like, and they also, I got them on such a discount because the Toys R Us was going out of business that I think they were like $6 a piece. And I was like, oh, I don't want these. Uh, so I am going to look to get a couple small Lego sets that I can do on the road that will be easy for me to do like uh, when I'm traveling, which won't be till March, but uh, you have Android 18 and you want to get Future Trunks, Teen Gohan, and Perfect Cell. I mean, I have, uh, Johnny, I have built all those kits. Krillin was really fun. Um, I'd like to build Piccolo. That's on the top of my list. Uh, I looked at Brawly. I don't think is out yet, but Brawly will probably go on my wish list. Um, I built Kid Boo. Kid Boo was a fun build. And then I built Blue Goku. Blue Goku was also a fun build. Uh, did I build Vegeta? I think I built a Vegeta. I don't remember. I might have built a Vegeta too. I built a few of them and liked them. I haven't built Vegeta in his ship. I helped Dan build his. And we didn't. he was missing pieces in that kit, which is a shame. I th my theory is that the person that sent it to him kept the Vegeta and just sent him the ship. That is my theory. Because we could not find any of the Vegeta sheets with that kit. I think I made a blue Vegeta or a Super Saiyan Vegeta, but I can't remember. Uh, but I did a lot of fun building those kits, so wouldn't mind doing it more of those Dragon Ball kits in the future. Krillin was good. Well, now, actually, you know what I really want is uh, I want Great Saiyan Man. That is the kit that I would love to build. I would love to build Great Saiyan Man. I love Great Saiyan Man so much. Even if it's the new um, Super Sa even if it's the new like uh, Super Great Saiyan, like older Go uh, Gohan, I'll take it because he's still young. But Teen Gohan, Great Saiyan Man, Bandana or Helmet, I'm up for either. I if it had both, even better. Uh, Super Saiyan Three Goku kit looks hilarious. Oh yeah, it's that's very silly. I haven't added that. I should probably add that to the wish list because that's very silly. I should just ask, I'll add the ones that I don't have in there. All right, so we're going to build up. So we're going to build our ninja, and we're going to build our uh, evil samurai shogun, I guess. Not really sure what this dude's deal is. As I said, I don't know the show or movie or anything about it. Uh, all right, and we put that on there. And then we put that there. Uh, I want Great Saiyan Man and Videl. I think I think uh, fighting tournament Videl would be cool. I would also accept uh, um, Great Saiyan Woman or Great Saiyan. I think it's Saiyan Woman. I can't remember. But when she's also briefly in her version of her costume, uh, it's very brief and just for comedic effect. But I would take that as well, because I think that's very fun. Uh, but I would prefer, yeah, Teen Videl fighting, uh, pre-actual fight fighting Videl. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, also, a TN. Let me build a TN. Maybe, you know, throw in a Chiaotzu with TN, but let me build a TN. That would be awesome. He's the human that they have not made a kit for that I would like them to make a kit for. I don't know why this guy's got four arms. He does, though. He's a four-armed dude. Got four arms and two torsos. And I don't know why, but he does. And that's weird. All right, so we got more people. Got four. Six minifigs in this one. There's a lot of minifigs. I mean, really, they could have just only included hot dog. Oh, no. Dropped one. I dropped a minifig. I'll get that later. We don't need it. Let's add some more. There's a bunch of four-armed Dinjigo minifigs. Yes, I already built one in one of the dragons, I think, or the lightning jet. I can't remember which one, but there was... It's not my first time adding, uh, building a four-armed dude. It's still just weird. 
Um, okay, so that goes there. This goes here. And that goes there. Okay. Uh, we've got about a half an hour left to stream, so we'll keep building. Um, but yeah, but like I was saying, I want to, um, I, I want to pick up some kits to, I have a great backlog of kits, believe me. Uh, apparently there's a new line of kits called Figure Eyes Recanics, huh? I wonder if that, what those gimmicks are, but I'll keep my eyes peeled. But I, I would like to, um, get some Lego, like I'm probably, that's probably what I said, like I said, what I'm going to do with my next, uh, uh, payout from Twitch is get some kits that I could do on the road. Cause my backlog is, I've got a bunch of stuff, uh, that three is the, the, um, tall geese three is going to take a bit to, to make. I've got three other Lego sets and two other model kit sets. I still have that high grade, um, endless waltz sand rock to build because the master grade of that is a hundred and something fucking dollars. And I don't expect to ever get it. So I bought, but I want to build every version of every kit. I oh, every version. I want to build a one one hundred scale of every kit from Gundam, God uh, Wing. That is my goal. So that's why we built the high grade version of the Endless Waltz uh, heavy arms because I don't think we'll ever get the master grade version. But the high grade is a one one hundred scale. That's why we'll eventually get the other versions of uh, the Shenlong. There's two other ones uh, in the high grades because the second incarnation and the other one, like the master grade version of those are just outside my price range. So probably not get those. Um, the one I'm looking at from the purple haired Bulma on her motorcycle. Well, so there's, um, there are, uh, there are small little ones, the very small ones, uh, at, but also, I, I that might be a bigger kit. But yeah, there are tiny kits uh, that uh, I've gotten a couple um, uh, that are, yeah, they're very small little, like, they don't cost that much money. They were in le legitimately vending machines in the UK, uh, not UK, in Japan, UK. Um, and uh, they're coming out in boxes. But I have, I've, I have some and I'll build a couple. And eventually get the rest. But those are model kits. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm going to be picking up some Lego. Because small Lego kits are easy to transport. I don't know what I'm going to get though. But they'll, they'll be like Marvel or Star Wars or something. Maybe even Ninja Go. The one I'm looking at costs more than the standard kit, so I don't think it's the one the... Oh, it's, so it's not one of the small ones. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't mind finding a, a white Taurus. Never seen one of those as a model. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Um, oops. Goes there. Yeah, I'm like, you know, always on the lookout for cool kits. Um, the... Uh, Power Rangers stuff is way outside my price range, so I'm not expecting to build those, but you know, when I'm at conventions, I'm, I'm I almost, look, I almost went to Anime Next, which was at the Javits Center in New York, specifically to buy model kits, but my, uh, a friend of mine who was going to hand me over a pass ended up needing to give it to someone else because it was work related, so I did not get a free pass, and that is the only reason why I didn't go is because I wasn't going to pay a day rate to just go and buy model kits. I'm glad I didn't because then I ended up with a, a, a weird bank thing. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't do that, but I almost did that. Because, like, sometimes, you know, I mean, that's where I, uh, sometimes I'll find those high grades uh, from Gundam, the, the Gundam wing, like, I'm also, uh, sometime this year, maybe in February, I don't know, I'm going to go to Gundam Planet, because it is a store, there is a physical, oops, there's a physical location in New Jersey, and it's not too far away, it's a day trip, so it'll be like, 
a Friday. I'll just go. Um, but I want to go there. That's where I got the 160 scale uh, wing Gundam. Uh, I got that and it was, you know, they mailed it to me. Because I had a discount, like a coupon. But I've been thinking about going there. Uh, there are, there's another place here in New York that has some kits, but their prices are their prices are okay. But they're not they're a uh, general stuff. Like they they want to sell they want to sell model kits, but they also want to sell like shirts and posters and Naruto headbands and like and that's their business. And so I'm not you know disparaging it, but they don't always have a wide variety. Whereas Gundam Planet wants to sell me model kits. And shit if they don't have a lot of model kits. So, that's where I'm probably going to get the high-grade versions, the 1-100 scale high-grades of the kits I don't have yet to complete my collection. Um, get the Ultron and the... I forget, It starts with an N, but it's the... Uh, it's the Endless Waltz version of the fifth Gundam. But yeah, that's probably why I'll end up getting those. Because those rule. All right. And maybe even the Talkies, too. Like, you have to get that at some point. If I'm going to build everything from, from Gundam Wing, eventually I'll have to get all of them. But that is that is one of my goals as a, uh, uh, as a streamer, is on stream, I want to build every... Uh, Gundam and Tall Geese from Gundam Wing. I don't really care about Mercury and the, the other one. Those other kits, I don't really give a shit about. I mean, they're cool looking, but I don't have the same kind of interest as uh, in the other kits that uh, from that show. I already built the Epion. I built every other thing. I haven't built the Sand Rock yet. You may have noticed the Sand Rock is legitimately my least favorite of the four because I or the five because I just don't think anything's interesting about it um, but uh eventually I'll build that high grade uh the tall geese three from endless waltz is the next kit we're building that was bought by board um, Ming so we're gonna build that next and then when that's done I'll put up probably a poll up see what's going on um i've got those dragon ball kits but i might save those sand rock only looks cool with that cape yes and the master grade has the cape i don't believe the high grade has the cape um but uh i have the the high grade of it of the endless waltz version so and then i don't i've never built the original version of it I don't even own that. That's the only one I haven't bought the Master Grade of yet. And eventually I will. And of course, that's all, as I said, in the 1-100 scale. Because I don't like to build 144. I'll build some real grades in the 144. Uh, because that's the size of those. But I don't really like working in that scale. Uh... Yeah, I'm just not a big Sandrock fan. It's just not my kit, you know? It's like, it's just not my thing. Um, not looking to, to build it. If I had a rank, it would be uh, every Death Scythe. And then probably the Epion. And then the Tall Geese 3. But it might be the Tall Geese 3 and then the Epion. Um... And then probably the Endless Waltz. Uh, I got to fucking look this up. I'm going to go to Gundam Planet. See the, I'm going to look at my wish list of Gundam Planet and figure out the name of the this kit. Uh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me sign in. Let me sign in. What? Oh. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me find my wish list on Gun to Planet. It has some of the stuff that isn't there. Uh, 
it's the uh, uh, not a coup. So it is uh, there's the Shenlong, uh, the Altron, uh, which only has a high grade, um, and the uh, um, the other one is the um, the yeah not a coup. Not a coup. I think looks fucking rad, and the colors are fantastic. I love that it has hands, and then can they can be the claws? I always think that's a cool looking version of that. And then, yeah, the Ultron Gundam is pretty cool because it has the double arms and the shield. The shield is in a terrible position, but uh, it looks all right. It's just terrible. Uh, my wish list for. Because uh, you can't make the wish list public and people can't buy you stuff at, like Amazon on, on Gundam Planet. It's just for you. But my wish list is just like Gundam Wing. <laughs> it is helpful though because I can get, I can kind of see like, all right, this is the price if I just bought it from Gundam Planet. So like when I go to, I, I usually keep that open in a tab on my phone when I go into other stores and kind of compare and see, like, all right, how much is this compared to if I went in and bought this at uh, Gundam Planet? So that's helpful. Or is this price on Amazon with free shipping worth it? Because I will be paying for shipping on Gundam Planet. Um, the thing that I'm always looking for at... Uh, uh, conventions because when I go to conventions I look to see if people are selling model kits and usually I'm just looking I'm not looking for the new thing right because they're going to upsell the new thing uh, third party distributors are going to upsell your um, blue brands the, the people that do the distribution in the US for Gundam I mean it might be higher but they're most likely going to be higher on things that you would at that point have to import so you're still better off just going there the third-party stuff is going to be for stuff you can't find anywhere anymore. Um, and then it's also for, like, sometimes it's for garage kits and, like, knockoff kits. But really, it's just, like, looking to see if it's worth it to buy what they're charging, to spend the money for what they're charging, rather than um, going and... Uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, rather than just, like spending the money uh, to um, just get it right now or spending on Amazon later. That's really all it is. Uh, have you gone after any of the clear kits that are sold at cons? So I did. We, we, we've only done one clear kit on the channel. Uh, what was that? Um, it was the... Oh, it was the V Gundam. Uh, it was the V Gundam has... And it has like... It's actually a really beautiful kit. I like that Gundam a lot, and the transformation elements of it were cool. Like the, it was a really cool, fun kit to build. That has been the only, um, uh, sorry, um, I put this piece in the wrong position, and I gotta move it. Uh, that has been the only one we've built uh, on stream um, as a clear, and it was it was a cool build. Uh, the V2, yes. Uh, just Google that. It looks rad as hell. Yeah, I would I would recommend going to the archives for that one if you're interested in, in seeing that. It's kind of interesting to build on camera. Um, it worked pretty well on the overhead. It didn't work so well on, you know, me holding it up. But it's uh, it was an interesting kit to build. I, I definitely would be down to building another one. It's usually for those, it's just like the price of it. Like, I don't need to get the tall geese. Uh, the Master Grade Tall Geese that is has a new coat of paint that looks more metallic, right? I don't need to build that. That's very cool, but I don't need to build it. Uh, oh, this doesn't go there. I built this wrong. Um, that's like a cool thing, but it's it's not something that I need to to do. Uh, and built, but like I like the look of it. Um, I'd I'd like to build another one. Yeah. Um, those are things I definitely look out for because they're unique and interesting, uh, 
for the channel. Um, so I, I am interested in, in that. Uh, but I'm also like, especially if it's in New York or if it's, uh, if I'm taking a train, you know, like there are no, you're not going to find model kits at PAX. Occasionally you might find something like that. Like somebody might have some kind of mega constructs for Halo or something, but it doesn't feel like that's the audience for it. Uh, so I'm never expecting to end up with a kit that I've bought there. I might end up going to like a toy store or something like that. Uh, Robot Crank says the only clear one I've built is the Build Divers uh, Magnum. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've only built uh, a couple of them, and I, I, one of them on stream, and that's the only clear I think I've ever built. I, I definitely would be interested in picking up another um, if the price was right. Look at that shark. You're really starting to get a sense of what it looks like here. You can see it in my camera. Really starting to feel that shark. Starting to pop. Um, I dropped a piece and it was red and I don't know where it went, but I don't need it yet. So hopefully I won't need it uh, before we wrap up and then I'll just go and find that piece. But I did, one piece did roll away from me. It was this piece uh, identical to that piece and it just got away from me. Hopefully I don't need it in the next 10 minutes of building. But yeah, I would be interested in building another kit. Uh, but yeah, like I said, um, most of the time, like, I'm going to leave room in my suitcase if I end up going to um, either San Diego or Emerald City this year. Because um, I'd like to go to both, and I don't know if I'm going to either right now. Um, I owe people an email about that. But I would like to go, and if I do go, then the hope is that I will take a large suitcase, put it on the plane give myself room to come back with some kits to build. That will be something interesting, you know? Uh, like, I think that Voltron kit with the, the super minifigs, like, that was a fun kit to build. Uh, I was happy to build that. Um, and uh, whereas, like, if I'm going to Gundam Planet, it might be something that, like, the shipping would be a lot if I bought it online. Or it's still a big price, but it's better than the Amazon price, that kind of thing. Like when I go to Gundam Planet, I will have my Amazon wish list open on my phone and like look to see. And try to figure that stuff out. Because I gotta be frugal with the money that I to get. You know, like the um, like I don't know. I don't know if I will buy a Star Wars kit anytime this year unless it's a small one for traveling but even then like the ninja go stuff is just so much more bang for your buck than lego than star wars like the uh i've talked about this before but like the star wars tax the is so high that it's it is very hard to justify some of those kits are a beautiful the u-wing is incredible i love the u-wing i love the y-wing i love the millennium falcon uh kits like i love the kits i've built that are star wars i'm so happy i was able to build those but they are so pricey for the amount of pieces that you that you have on them and the amount of time it takes to build them is just so incongruent i'm not going to try to say that word you just don't get the bang for your buck. And you know what I mean. Just like it's a, it's a hard sell. Alright, so this goes like this. We are just I am just adding pieces here uh, to our shark here. Kinda opening it up, making making some putting some layers on this shark. Oh, we're going to put our eye in here. So we got our eye. And I'll show you that in a second. But this is what I've done here. I put in some side stuff, put in an eyeball. And I'll do that on the other side as well. Uh, I got an HD double clear kit of the XCA Repair uh, versus Zero Gundam on a wish list, but spending $96 on a high grade, I'm not sure it's worth it. Yeah, Robot Crank, that's a lot for a high grade. 
because uh, high grades don't take too long to build. Even that Master Gundam, one, it was 1-100 one scale uh, Master Gundam on uh, Fushugi, the, uh, or I think that was the name of that, the horse, the Master Gundam for G Gundam on the horse was a high grade and was still, it was still really reasonably priced. And that was a very fast build. That took no time to do. So, yeah, I don't know if $96 for a high grade. It's got to have a lot of stuff to it. Uh, the 160 scale um, Wing Zero uh, uh, was pretty pricey. Uh, I used my YouTube money on that. And that was that was uh, definitely not a cheap kit. But, I mean, it's big and great. It's two Gundams, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, two Gun it's two Gundams, but it's still a lot of money. Like, I don't know. Um, I hope to someday, uh, I'd like to do uh, the Power Ranger stuff. I think that stuff is very pricey right now. So I don't necessarily think it's going to happen, but I think it looks really cool. So I don't know if that's in the cards for me. Oops. Let's put a piece on here that does not belong on here. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Separator. Um. But yeah, I'm going to keep an eye out uh, on uh, for, for stuff. You know, I'm always looking to do cool things. And I would like to, uh, like that, Um, I might end up, you know, this at some point myself picking up that Optimus Prime. Oh, hi, Hygarian. Hello and welcome. Hygarian, who uh, just got made a, a VIP. Um, I, um, yeah, I, I might pick up that, um, that kit because I think it would be cool to build a Optimus Prime doing a Transformer model kit. Uh, yeah, I made a few people VIPs because I, I unlocked more ability to make more people VIPs and it's a fun little, it doesn't, do much, but it's kind of nice. Give you another badge, let people know. Obviously, you have the badge that says that you cheered me, which is rad, and you have the subscriber badge, but it's nice to throw in that now and again, let people know what's up. That you are, that you're uh, helping me out, which obviously I very much appreciate. We are almost done with this, with this uh, bag. We're going to Get close to finishing up before we call it quits for the day. And we'll keep working on this on Saturday. Um, I don't think we're going to finish it on Saturday because we still have several bags. But I will have at least one bag nulled on Saturday. And then we will pick up from there. Uh, but I try not to have too much nulled in advance. Uh, Smash Mouth says... My life goal is to have my badges be bigger than my name. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, you got a bigger, you got a big name there, so might be a little tough. Um, I think this piece here is what kind of connects our shark to the legs, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't know everything about this kit, much of anything really. Um, ooh, it does look like we're gonna finish this bag up because it looks like that piece that I dropped is the spare of these. And I only need one of them, which is great. Always lovely that Lego has so many spares. Uh, God, I think that's it. And if not, I'll I'll just we'll quit when we're done with this piece. But let's try to finish this up. We'll go a couple minutes over. No big deal. Uh, um. Oh, I, you know, I always forget about saying the thing about cheers. But yeah. Bits and cheers and all that stuff are always appreciated because they um, get me closer to getting that payout. I, I have a payout coming. I believe the middle of this month I will get another payout from Twitch, which is great because it lets me purchase equipment and kits. Um, I used a little bit of money to buy. Um, I Right now, I've been doing, um, because it's a low-profile solution, uh, my green screen has been hanging from uh, Velcro strips that I have like adhered to the wall. But the problem is the Velcro part that's attached to the um, uh, 
sheet, the green screen sheet, uh, which, you know, uh, if I do this, you can see it's a sheet. And one of the reasons why it's bad is because it, there's lots of, it's not adhered to the wall full well, and you can see there's lots of wrinkles in it. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's bad behind me. Uh, it could be better. But one of the, the solutions I'm looking into is, uh, and I just bought a little bit of equipment to there, is to do a pole instead of the that, and then just screw in a couple hooks into the wall, slide that through, hang it on a pole, and then I can, once that's in, and the screws are secured into the wall, uh, the hooks are secured into the wall, I can put a little weight on the bottom of the of this uh, sheet, and if I'm putting, if I'm weighing it down, it will smooth out a lot of the things. Because the thing is, it has to be temporary. I have to be able to move um, my uh, set. Or I have to move this green screen. Sounds like quite the setup. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really simple to put up. Um, the thing that I do mostly, uh, which helps me a lot, is um, all this equipment here is just going to live on the table, and the table from Thursday to Saturday just. It, I have less room in my room while I do that. That's not. I have less uh, accessible space because of it, um, and then I am able to. Uh, oh, that moves the mouth. Fuck yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, it makes it easier. It's not that bad of a setup, but the idea of having a couple of hooks on the wall and then just hanging up, sliding a pipe through that is what I can do. Is then take the pipe off and then just roll up or what I also might do is just attach a fasten in the middle and then I can just roll up the green screen sheet up to the pole fasten it tie it off put it against a wall when I'm not using it that'll be a lot easier than my current setup which is oftentimes not great uh, also, sometime like right now, I'm I'm using some gaff tape because the sticky isn't working right, and that gaff tape does not have a long shelf life on the walls. Uh, a couple people suggested. Um, oh, Johnny's got to go. Take care, it's chores. Uh, take it easy. Goodbye. Uh, anything to help, especially the smaller ones. Yes, it really is that thing where it's like honestly, what I really uh, what I should do if I really wanted to save space and save time is paint this wall green that's honestly what i should do i just don't want to paint i don't want to paint it green because then painting it green would would mean that like it would just mean that i'm gonna move out you know because as soon as i do i'm gonna have to move right because that's the way things work as soon as you uh as soon as you like make that kind of decision, suddenly like you've got to go, and then I gotta paint it all. Yeah, maybe no green wall. Yeah, I mean, but it would make my life so much easier if this was just a green wall. Uh, it would be way easier. Uh, oh, uh, anonymous is rating with a party of three. Okay. Uh, oh, I don't know why. Uh, that's uh, that is a uh, small group party. Well, thank you very much for coming in, y'all. I know it's you, Tom. I, I don't know why uh, it said anonymous. I went and looked over. It's Tom Tyke, everybody. Uh, hello. We are literally just wrapping up, uh, probably because of your name. It could be that it just uh, it anonymized your name because it tri triggered something there. Uh, we are just wrapping up, but I can show off the cool thing that just came in. Uh, so we're building ourselves a, a mech shark. Eventually, it's going to have legs and be able to walk around. But what it does have right now is it can open its mouth. It can open its mouth. We just did this. Uh, I love it, too. Uh, it just happens. We just did it. I'm trying to get in the main one there. There it is. And then these will probably be... There, there'll be something connected to it to make it easier for you to do this because that's how it goes. Uh, we also have our hot dog uh, noodle cot, our hot noodle dog. Um, and we've got our people, our minifigs. We've got our hot dog minifig, hot dog man minifig. This is this kit has a lot going for it. Noodle dog. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ninja Go is an incredible line. You should take a look at it, Tom. Um, 
the Ninjago line, the dragons in the Ninjago line, the Chinese, the green Chinese dragon is unbelievably incredible. Uh, board says Shark Week confirmed. Indeed. Uh, hot dog uh, cart. I didn't realize that in the previous. Yes. Yeah. So that's the, it's a hot noodle dog. So the hot dog person has a hot dog cart and that's their thing. And then there's bad people. And this girl, I think this girl was just trying to buy a hot dog. And then, like, shit got weird because a shark robot showed up. Um, and there'll be guns on the back of this thing. And it's, like, it's pretty cool. You were <laughs> shark bait. Ha. Uh, you were just talking about a hot dog cart. Now you want a fancy Seattle hot dog. All I wanted was a hot dog, and then a shark showed up. Um, but yeah, this kit, like, this kit's, there are a lot of pieces. Let me see here what we got here. This is a 830-piece kit, but we've already done a lot. We've still got plenty of stickers left, decals. Uh, we did three bags. It's pretty good. Uh, so it's coming together pretty easy, which is good. Uh, the... Wait, sorry. Uh, can we talk about hot dogs again? I mean, we did a four-headed ninja go, a four-headed dragon. What? The ultra dragon. Hey, hey, hey! Talk amongst yourselves. I mean, I'll keep talking, but I am also googling ultra dragon to see if what's up with that. Uh, okay, yeah. That well. I mean, dang. That looks real good. I'm going to look up that in Amazon. And see if it's on Amazon yet. Mm, doesn't seem to be yet. It's putting me at other things. I... Uh, doesn't look like it's there yet, but there's some other stuff. Well, there's the epic dragon battle. That looks pretty cool. But that's a very expensive kit. And I'm not going to include it on my wish list. But anyway, sorry. Oh, Robot Crank found it. Legacy, the Ultra Dragon. I mean, that's, that's an expensive kit. I mean, it's going on my wish list because... I've said things like, I'll never be able to build this. And then people have just bought it. So maybe Steve Ling will just like happen to stroll through and see it. Steve happened to show up on Twitch uh, two years ago uh, when I first started. Like uh, two months in. And I just happened to be like, uh, does it come with a hot dog? I mean, I don't know. But yeah, Steve Ling just happened to be like popped in. And I just said, like, I'm never going to build a perfect grade. And he went on my wish list and bought me that perfect grade, which was unbelievable and complete nonsense. Uh, and I don't know who bought that Millennium Falcon. That, no one has ever taken credit for buying that Millennium Falcon, the 2011 Millennium Falcon. Um, I do know that Board uh, in the chat bought me that incredible tall geese that I can't wait to build. But, yeah. Um, uh Handle for easy swooshability. Nice. Yeah, that kit looks rad. I mean, I'm not expecting to ever build it, but it looks rad. 951 pieces. So I love that each dragon had its different color. Oh, that thing looks radical. Uh, oh, I love the wings. The wings look so good. There's another little thing attached. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful looking kit. I don't, yeah. But, you know, sometimes they go on sale. Or like this kit, uh, I had Amazon gift cards. And so it wasn't that expensive to get. But, um, all right, that's going to do it for the stream. Uh, we went a little longer because we got a nice little raid. I appreciate the raid very much. Uh, 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 thanks, everybody, for, for popping in. Um, I will be back on Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, uh, working on this more with the shark. Um, thank you everybody for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, let me see if there's anybody we should go raid. I'm going to go to my list and see if there's anybody. Ah, 
I've done it last two streams. I'm not going to do a third stream. Tom, you do not apologize. Uh, yeah, no problem. I'm happy to show off this thing. I'm glad I have something uh, substantial to show off because sometimes we're just starting a kit and I'm like, uh, it's going to be a thing. It's just not a thing yet. But now I got this, friends. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh, I'll see you on Saturday, hopefully. Um, this will be archived on YouTube tomorrow. And uh, have a great night. Goodbye.